In this video, I'll walk you through how you can create, send, track, and sign all the documents using DocuSign. And full disclaimer, this is a very beginner level tutorial. So if you've already been using DocuSign for a while and you're just looking for ways to speed up and even maybe automate the process, I recommend you watch my other video that shows you how to use DocuSign and how to automate it in 2024. But for now, in this particular video, this is what you're going to learn. First, I want to make sure that you understand the terminology. So what are envelopes, how you send them, and how you manage the envelopes that you have sent. From there, you'll be able to master how to automate the process further using templates and then later on integrations. But let's start with what an envelope is. Envelopes work very similarly if you compare them with paper standard envelopes. But the main difference is that you can place as many documents as you want inside of those envelopes, virtual envelopes, and the envelopes will automatically route from one signer to the next, provided that there's more than one person who needs to sign the same document, of course. So when recipient one is done signing, then the envelope will be routed to recipients two and etc until the envelope is fully completed what your envelopes contain are the documents the recipients which are also called the signers but they're not necessarily signing some of them are just receiving a copy of the documents and not necessarily acting on the documents per se and then you've also got the fields fields tell your recipients or signers where they need to sign on the document and the way people sign is simply by clicking on the signature fields that were configured by the sender you who are watching you are sending a document you're the sender and if somebody tells you but how complex can DocuSign get it's super simple you just need to sign Yes, and if it's super simple, it's because the sender has done so much work to make it simple for the signers. It's never simple when you're on the sending side. It's super simple when you're receiving and signing. Does that make sense? I've added all of this in a free DocuSign Mastery Cheat Sheet that you can download at solisign.com forward slash cheat sheet. And if you're wondering who I am, my name is Sofian Saudi and I'm an ex DocuSign software implementation consultant, now founder of Solisign Consulting, where we help organizations implement DocuSign. So if you'd like our team to set things up so that yours doesn't waste their time learning the whole system from scratch, you can book a complimentary implementation strategy session with one of us. All the links that I'm talking to you about in this video, you can find them down below. For now, let's see how to send an envelope. Let's pretend that we want to hire someone and that new hire needs to complete the offer letter that's just here. And we also want them to provide banking information inside of this form, the bank form. And once that's done, we as the HR wants to countersign this document. You can see here there's two signature blocks, one for the candidate and one for HR. So what we'll do is log into DocuSign and create a new envelope. So once you're here, you want to click on start and then envelopes, send an envelope. Your doc count might look a little different depending on when you're looking at this, watching this tutorial, but the steps will be the exact same. Once we've started creating our envelope, the first step that we have to do is to upload the documents that we want to place inside of this envelope, right? From here, we're going to upload the documents that we want to place inside of our envelope so I can browse on my computer or I can also pull documents from Google Drive or somewhere else. For now, I'm just going to upload documents that I've saved on my computer already. And now we're going to add two recipients. Why? Because the first person is going to be the candidate and then the second person is going to be HR. So. I'm going to add the first person. Let's just call that person Sofian Candidate and put my email. And I'm going to add a second recipient and I'm going to call that person Sofian HR. I don't want to leave it like that because if I don't set a signing order, both of those recipients will receive the envelope at the same time. That's not what I want. I first want my candidates to be signing and only I, acting as the HR, want to receive the document to countersign once the candidate has signed. The other thing that I could do is to change the signing action from needs to sign to something else. But in this example, both of these recipients need to sign, so I'm just going to leave it as is. I can customize the email subject and email message to add something if I want to. Now in the advanced options, I can configure other reminders and an expiration date for all my envelopes if I want. So if I turn on other reminders, DocuSign will ask me to provide them with the number of days to wait in between each reminder. So I'm going to say send a reminder every two days and the number of days to wait before the first reminder, I'm going to say wait for five days. By default, your envelopes will expire after 121 days. I'm going to save and then go to the next step, which is adding my DocuSign fields. So DocuSign field are the things that will tell your signers what to do on documents. In this example here, you can see that all my fields are yellow. And this is because the fields that I'm going to add 
by dragging and dropping them on the documents are assigned to that to the signer that's here to the yellow signer so that's for the candidate if i change from candidates to hr and i drag another signature field here that one will be for the hr to sign and the candidate will have to sign this one so one cannot sign one recipient cannot use the field of another recipient unless you can figure a rule but that's another that's an advanced option i'm not going to keep those signature fields here of course i'm going to navigate to where i want my signature fields to actually go on the document and drop them so i'm going to go back to my candidate i like to add the fields in the order that people are going to sign the documents because it's logical but there is no right or wrong way of doing so of adding your fields so the candidate needs to sign here and here we want the name and here we want the date so i'm going to drag a signature field and if i want this signature field to be located in the right spot i can just use that little bar and try to get it as close as possible to the underlying a line on the actual document itself now i'm going to drag a full name field as well as a date signed field that's it i don't need anything else for the candidate on this specific page but i also want the employer so hr in this example to counter sign these documents once the candidate has done that so i could just go here and drag a signature field and a name field and a date field but to save some time i can simply grab all my fields and do control if you're using windows or command if you're using mac and d for duplicate and that's going to create a copy of all the fields that I have selected and then I can just position them correctly and the next step is to change the recipient to whom those fields are assigned to so here you're changing the recipient before you actually drag and drop the field here you can change the recipient of the field you've already added on the document. So I'm going to select Sophie and HR and the color of those fields is changing to blue. I'm done with this specific document. I can now go and set up my bank form. So DocuSign can be used not to only collect signatures from your signers, but also information. And then you'll be able to extract that information and use it to update your systems, either manually or using an integration. On this document, I want to capture some personal information. So I'm going to drag and drop a first and last name. Now to find the first and last name field, you just have to change the, the properties of that field using the right panel. So I'm change this to first, and I'm going to copy that, duplicate that field, drop it here using command D and change that to last name. The first and last name will be automatically pulled from the first and last names of the recipient that I enter at the time I'm sending the document. So this will automatically be populated with Sophian's candidate or Sophian HR. In this example, actually, I made a mistake. I don't want this to be for HR. I want this to be for the candidate. So I'm going to change this to Sophian candidate. And this will automatically change first name with the word Sophian and last name with candidates because DocuSign will assume that the first word entered in this is the first name and the second word is the last name. Now that's for my first and last name. For my street address here, I'm going to grab a text field and place it here. I'm going to do the same thing for my city and I'm going to do the same thing for my zip. I'm going to reduce the width of the field by dragging my bottom right corner and that's it for my zip. Now for the zip, I want to add a validation. Validation pre prevents your signers from entering in incorrect information in the field. This is really important for data accuracy. So you want to change the validation whenever a validation exists for the type of information you're collecting. And here I'm going to select zip. Obviously this is for an American postcode. Now for my state, I could also use a text field, but I don't really like to use text fields because some people would write maybe New York and some people would just write NY, so the abbreviation. But if I want clean data, I'm going to be using a dropdown field instead. And this dropdown field can be configured with the list of all the states. So I could just say New York, California, Wyoming, whatever you want. And then when your signer will access the envelope, they'll simply be able to choose from one of those options. You can download a list of pre-configured fields in the cheat sheet that I've included in this video as well, so that you don't have to create all the states from 
scratch. I've already got a custom field. So instead of using this field that I've just created, I'm going to use a custom field that I have already saved in my fields library. So instead of having to create fields each time, we can just save those so that they're a little bit faster to add. Actually, I don't have my state field in this account. I'm not using the same account, so I can't do it here but I could have just imported my state field with the list of all the states directly from here. Now for my social security number, I'm going to grab a text field and I'm going to validate this text field with an SSN validation. And for the email address, I've already got the email since I'm sending that DocuSign envelope to my candidate using their email address. So I'm just going to use the automated field, which is the email field. And same thing as for the first and last name, that email will be automatically populated with the email address that I've added in my recipients just right here. So that's going to be populated with that. And my recipient will not have to do anything to populate that email. And for my phone number, there is no validation that exists with phone number. So I'm simply going to leave it as is. Now for my bank, I'm going to do the same thing. So this is for the bank name. This is for the street address for the bank. I could simply just grab all of those and duplicate. It's very simple. Same thing for account number and same thing for routing number and same thing for phone number. And then for my account type, this is a radio button because I want my signers to choose between the two options. And if they choose one option, they can't choose the other one. And so that's why you want to use a radio field as opposed to a checkbox field because a checkbox group can contain multiple checkboxes that are checked. But in a radio button group, if I check checking and then I try to select savings, it's going to unselect this one, which is exactly what I want to happen. And before we press send, I want to explain what else you can do with this little panel here. So you can see that this field is fully yellow, but if I uncheck this box, it becomes white and only the border is yellow. That means that this field is not going to be required for the signer. They can provide information if they want to, but they don't have to. So that's quite handy to know. The next option that's very useful is read only. So if we select this option and we enter something here, then that information will be visible by the signer, by all the signers actually but signers won't be able to update it. So that's very handy for some sort of information that you want to show to signers, but you don't want them to update it. So let's just click on send and see how it works from the signers perspective now. All right, so the documents has been sent. Now let's take a look at how it looks like from the signer's perspective. So that's a document that we've just received and it says that it's a test document because I'm not using paid envelopes. I'm using a DocuSign sandbox. And what is a DocuSign sandbox? It's just an account that allows you to test and set up your account without wasting your DocuSign paid envelopes. Because yes, I hate to break it to you, but DocuSign doesn't give you free or unlimited envelopes. I strongly suggest that you create a DocuSign developer account. You can just create that very easily. You can go to this link here and it will say something like create your create account. There you go. Just fill out this form. You can use the same email address and the same password and all your documents are going to be watermarked. Now I'm going to click on review documents and open the envelope as the candidate because the candidate signs first. So I can agree to use electronic records and click on continue. From here, I'm being asked to sign. If I actually missed this field here and click on start, DocuSign will tell me, hey, you have to sign this. And I have to fill out all these fields and they, they are red. The reason that I have to fill out all these fields is because they were made required in the envelope. And so as you can see, the street address is not I can't update it. And that's probably because I forgot to uncheck the read only box in the previous step. So here I have to provide a correct zip code or at least a zip code that looks like it's correct. You see here it says invalid. So if I leave it like that, I'm not actually going to be able to submit my envelope. So let's just see what happens if I click next and then finish. DocuSign tells me, hey, you've missed that specific envelope, that specific signature, so I have to do it. And then same thing here. It tells me that my zip code is invalid. So if I enter something that looks like it's valid, then I can actually click on finish. Now I'm going to receive another doc, another notification very shortly, asking me to complete the envelope, not as the candidate, but as the HR. And here it is, it's just been received. But before I do that, I want to show you how you can manage and track the envelopes that were sent because not just about sending the envelope, it's also about tracking and making sure that people actually sign it and being able to manage those envelopes that you've sent. So this envelope, if I look for it now, if I go to my agreements tab, 
I can see that this specific document here has been signed by Sofian candidates. It's been signed at 2, 4 p.m. And I can see that the HR has not signed. Now, if I go here and open the envelope as HR, I'm going to be able to countersign very quickly. HR doesn't need to do anything. And I can click on adopt and sign and then finish. And in a moment, this will be updated and it will say completed. Actually, if I refresh, that should already be the case. And here it is. Now, I also receive a copy of the completion email. So as we can see now, we have the document that was filled out, attached to my completed document. DocuSign will always send a signed copy of all the documents to all the signers and the sender. So that means that you don't need to email a copy of the completed documents to whoever signed your documents. If they signed, they received the copy. Now I can no longer do it, but one thing that you can do if you want is to update the email or the name of someone who you sent the envelope to already. So you see this envelope has been completed, so I can't do anything about it. But this envelope that I sent on the 23rd of May, I could technically go inside of this envelope and click on correct. And what this allows me to do is again, not spend paid the envelopes to send a new document to someone in case I made a mistake in someone's name or someone's email at the time of sending. I can go in, in here, you see, you see it says correcting and I can change that email address if I want. And I'm simply going to update the email of or the name or whatever else. I can even upload additional document to my envelope I can do a bunch of things. So that's called correct. Correct is really powerful. The next thing that I can do is to resend the envelope notification. Maybe you did not configure auto reminders and by and, and your recipients have deleted the email notification asking them to sign the documents by accident. When that's the case, you can simply click on resend and that's going to trigger the email notification. So this one to be sent to your recipient. And finally, you can also void the envelope. Voiding means that you're going to cancel the transaction and it will not be bought anymore by your signers. Another thing that's really powerful is being able to extract the form data from the completed envelopes. Form data is the information that your signers have entered in the form fields. So for example, here we've got bank information as well as personal information. And instead of cut from here and paste it in my payroll system or something like this, I can just go in here in more and view the form data. And that table is going to give me the information in a CSV format if I want to. I can also copy paste from here and I can extract this and update my systems. Again, it's really not a good idea to do this manually but if you leverage integrations, you can use all of the information provided by the candidate to update all your records. So you could technically create the candidate's payroll profile in your QuickBooks completely automatically. So now you know what DocuSign envelopes are, you know how to send them, and you also know how to manage them. And that's a great start. But as you saw, sending envelopes is quite time consuming if you do it manually each time without a template. The template will contain predefined workflows, including the recipients, the fields, and the documents and other little things that you normally set up completely manually. If you want our help to configure your DocuSign workflows, your DocuSign account, your DocuSign templates, you can book a complimentary implementation strategy session to learn more about our consulting options. And if you have an urgent need, you can also schedule a screen share consultation where we dive right into your account and can fix whatever issue you're facing right on the spot. You'll find the links of all the things that I've mentioned in this video in the description just down below. I'll see you in the next one. And until then, happy signing. Thank mm -hmm. you.